For this next segment, we're going to be looking for some leaks, and we need it to be just a little bit darker. We're going to be using a leak light. Saxophones uh, are really difficult to, to get in there and see where air is leaking. So one thing that's been found a number of years ago is by putting some kind of a light down the instrument, you can see where the air comes in and out. So right now we see the light shining in. Uh, when we press the keys down, we see that the light disappears. Uh, if you look in this segment up here, when we press the keys up and down, we see that we still have light shining. So this is a spot that would need to be adjusted to get rid of that, that sort of situation. Uh, this is actually a pretty inexpensive leak light. I think it's under $20. But if you don't have one and you can't buy one, uh, then what are you going to do? And there's times really that you need a leak light to be able to really fix things. So I was thinking about this. I was walking around my local uh, dollar store. I was thinking about late night field patrols uh, and those little chemical lights that people hang on so they see themselves in the dark. And it's like, wow, I wonder how well this might work as an emergency leak light. So. This one comes with two, and we, okay, now it's starting to get its chemical glow, and it's getting a little bit brighter. Okay, let me see when this is down in there. if. Well, so far, unless this thing gets a lot brighter, I'm not sure how much I'll see. I'm pretty sure that if we had all of the lights out, this would be way sufficient light uh, for that purpose. One of these really wasn't quite enough light, but they're real thin. We'll try another one here. We'll let them charge up, see if that gives us a little bit more light with two of them. So we're going to let these sit here and then we're going to try the real heavy duty bright yellow ones. I got a feeling this thing's going to be just great. The only thing that we might have some problems on this is, uh, okay, it does fit, uh, making sure that you don't get it into an instrument where you can't get it out. Uh, wouldn't work really well on the curved part of a baritone saxophone, but neither does any other light work real well on a baritone saxophone. They're kind of a kind of a drag. So these take a little while to activate. In the meantime, let's try a couple of these others. Yeah, and I just, I can, I can see a difference here, and I would be able to use this one, but with the lights that we need to film it, we can't really see this. But this is a really handy thing in an emergency, but you're going to need to go somewhere fairly dark for these to work. Okay, uh, we're not going to do the adjustment. There's times on these where... Uh, you should be able to figure out what you need in an emergency thing, and it's different in every situation. The important part is being able to see where the leak is. So this is that nice, thick yellow one, and it puts out a pretty significant amount of light. Um, let me see. Let's come back up here. Uh, we have this area here. This was where we had that leak before. Does that show up? So... Again, that comes down. This needs to go down further. So the adjustment for this one is that second screw next to the one that we had dealt with a little while ago. Uh, if it doesn't have a screw, you'd need to put a little piece of, of felt, thick masking tape, or something on there. But again, the leak light allows you to see that. Uh, now, with the light a little lower, let me just real quick see if, uh, if these things... That's very much like a disco 
And uh, you're going to have to be real desperate for that one to really work. But it, it is pretty cool. So we found chemical lights that they work. You saw the, the kind of pseudo standard one that repair people use. Uh, I found another one. I haven't had a chance to use it too much. It's a little bit inconvenient. It's a little USB light. It costs a dollar. Uh, this may be something that, that works for you. Obviously trying to use this with an adapter or holding your laptop might be a bit impractical. But if you have a little USB extension that this could plug into, this may be handy for a number of repair things, inspecting things, getting inside. I found it. I thought it was cool. So we bought it. Uh, another source, especially if you're dealing in the bell, uh, it's a pretty large surface. It doesn't reflect a lot of light. So uh, when I was working in Germany, uh, my cohorts over there taught me a method of essentially reversing my thinking pattern. Rather than looking from the outside, I'm going to look from the inside. So what I do is I, I shield all of the light from the outside and I put my eyes in here and I can very clearly see what's happening in here from the light from the outside. So this key, this is the B key, goes down by itself. You see it, it seals pretty well. Uh, B flat, the next one, these are supposed to go down together and we see that it doesn't. That fix this is also kind of a common problem, either that this is bent or missing something. There's a little tab right here that's missing its cork. That's also why that's kind of noisy. We're just going to put a big piece of our um, self-adhesive cork on this tab for right now. And then, okay. Okay, there's that down. Both of them, they seal just right. Kind of ugly under there. Ideally, I would start out with my, uh, my little pad of, <laughs> we'll get us a razor blade or scissors, and I will just, get the area that I want, trim it a little bit, and then pull off a piece that is more appropriate in size. And of course this stuff was really, oh good, I got, got most of that off. So this point, reposition your, your tweezers, press down the key, It shifted a little bit, but again, not quite as not quite as obtrusive as it was. It wouldn't be that hard to either take it off and replace it. But again, we're dealing with an emergency. This is going to function. It's not going anywhere. Place.